This episode originally aired as a part of my other podcast, Project Shadow. Over there, I have been doing world-building content for a while, and I'm currently moving it all over to this new podcast. New episodes will be appearing soon. I am currently making all of my old content, including World Building 101 and World Building 201, available on this podcast as Season 1 and Season 2 of Myth Weaving. I hope you enjoy, and don't forget to have the fun. Magic systems come in many varieties, in many shapes, and in many forms. And there's been a lot of talk about hard magic systems and soft magic systems and hybrid magic systems. And well, there are actually some questions you should get out of the way before you start deciding what kind of a magic system you're going to develop for your world. Because you need to know why there's magic before you can get started. So let's talk about that on today's episode of Project Shadow. Can you hear me? I have something to say. Hello everyone, how are you doing today? My name is Charlie. You might know me better as sci-fi fantasy writer C.E. Dorset, or that annoying person on YouTube who does all the writing sprints and streams all the time. Hi. <laughs> Magic. Magic is one of those things that's really hard to talk about because it's hard to approach the topic and not talk about all the ways it's been talked about before, or talking about it just in so much depth and minutia that it turns every body off. And I don't want to do either of those things. I do want to start off with just a request to all the writers out there, unless it is important to your story, unless it factors into the plot in some way, shape, or form. Please, please, can we stop with the magic is weird? Can we? Just please. I, I would be ever ever so grateful if we could actually just get rid of the trope of magic being weird. Because sometimes it matters, sometimes it works in the story, sometimes it's important for the plot, and if for your story and your world it's important, do it, do it. I'm not here to police your content. I'm just here to say that as a fan of various fantastic forms of literature I am tired. <laughs> I'm so tired of the idea that magic is weird. And I don't mean that your magic has to be boring or that your magic has to be normal. What I'm talking about is that whole idea of, oh my gosh, magic. Like, oh my, magic, magic. And okay, there is a place for that. And I'm not going to say that there isn't. But if you're writing in a magical society where everybody practices magic, legacies, <clears throat> then people having this innate response to, oh my gosh, magic is so weird, really doesn't make sense because everybody has some kind of magic in some way, shape, or form. And so they wouldn't be having that response. That's an audience insert response that you're putting into the world that doesn't fit comfortably in the story that you're telling. So maybe don't do that. And it, it it's just a personal taste on my part. This isn't a hard and fast rule. It's just, it's hard to take magic seriously when everybody in the story doesn't take it seriously. And if that's, again, the point of your story, go for it. Have fun. Run with it. But if you're living in a magical world, in a magical society where everybody has access to magic, or at least most of the characters that we are meeting have access to magic, it's fine to have an insert character that is new to everything. That's fine. That's wonderful. And it can help you add a sense of wonder and whimsy to the setting because they're seeing everything with fresh eyes. Nothing wrong with that. I'm just saying I'm tired of stories that are all about how weird magic is. I'm also tired of stories that are like, there's either magic or there's science and there can't be both. Because alchemy. <laughs> alchemy is both. 
uh, alchemy properly instituted into a story should be as complex as any science. So please maybe don't do that either. Mm, it's up to you though. I'm not here to judge. I'm just here to request to put my own desires out into the world. But now that I've kind of unburdened myself and gotten that off my chest, let's talk about some questions you should ask before you create your magic system. The first and most important question you should be asking before, before you create a magic system, before you decide that there are wizards and witches and all kinds of magical things in your setting, is why? Why? Because I, this goes back to what I said in the last segment, I am tired of reading stories where magic is like this weird add-on that like, uh, it has to be here because it's a fantasy story and it's not fantasy without magic. No, that's absolutely not true. That is absolutely not, not true. You can have a fantasy story without magic. That's perfectly all right. Magic does not fantasy make, though a lot of us fans of fantasy like having magic in our stories. And I like writing it in my stories. But you need to ask yourself, why? Why am I taking the time to add this to the setting? Why should this be in the story? Why should I take the time? Because if you can't answer that, you may be writing a fantasy story without magic. You might be. Because again, magic does not fantasy make. I mean, you look at the prototype of all fantasy literature, and that's the Lord of the Rings, right? Tolkien did not include very much magic in those stories. There's a little bit here, there, and yonder. But you could excuse that away with any kinds of whatever you wanted to and have that story completely fine without magic. And there's, with, with the exception of, and I'm sorry if I have to say spoilers for Lord of the Rings, but it's Lord of the Rings. <laughs> with the exception of Gandalf coming back to life, which he doesn't, he just gets a new body because he's not human and he never was. And that's not well explained either in the books or the movies. But other than that, everything else that takes place in the story doesn't really require magic for explanations. The ring. Okay, fine, the ring. But you could do that entire thing and just have people obsessing over the ring as a symbol of power and tell a fairly similar story with people fighting their own demons. And I know that because I've basically read versions of the Lord of the Rings like that. And I know that it can be done. And so ask yourself, why do you want magic? What is it? What interests you in magic? Because too many writers don't ask themselves that one simple question. And if you don't have an answer to that, you're going to find it hard to figure out how to put it into your stories. Why Am I doing spell casting and not something else? Why not do something more akin to bending? Why not? It's not spell casting in any way, shape, or form. But it is magic. What do you want the magic to be like? And why do you want it to be there? Is it there for narrative convenience? Is it there because it's a prerequisite? Because if it's if if it's either of those things. Unless you're writing a story that absolutely 100% has to have magic in it, you probably don't want to be writing a story that has magic in it. I'm just saying. So why? My personal favorite reason for using magic in my own stories is I can use the magic for two things. One, to add excitement and interest. I think that it is a wonderful special effect to give the characters. They could in most of my stories, just be martial artists and the stories would work just fine. But I want them to be more than martial artists. I want them to be able to run through the air and leap giant, vast spaces. I want them to be able to do amazing things that they wouldn't be able to do in the ordinary world, because that's my aesthetic and I like it. I also like to use ma magic to show subtle things that don't normally put manifest in a story. So many of the unconscious elements of the setting can be manifest and made real. It can work in a way that normally wouldn't. It's 
basically a method for me to speak the metaphor out loud. Why do you want magic in your story? You really should have a reason, because it will help ground you in what you're doing. Because once you know the reason you want magic in your story, that's going to help answer a lot of the questions that come later about how the magic should work. Because if, like me, you're interested in magic more as a, do you catch the term I used? Special effect? Then you want a soft magic system. Because a hard magic system is going to take away a lot of that effect from the story. The next question that you need to ask is, what are you going to be calling your magic users? Now, you may be like, Charlie, that's getting the horse before the, well, the cart before the horse, and it's not. That's why I couldn't even say the metaphor correctly, because this will tell you so much about the kind of world that you're wanting to build. If they're magicians, that's probably because you want the magic to be more charm-based and Maybe more illusionary, because you're thinking about magicians rather than wizards. Are they wizards? Do they cast spells? If they're witches, are they going to be brewing potions? Or why, why are you specifically thinking witches? Are they shamans? Are they calling on the spirits of their ancestors? Are they martial artists who are developing their core powers so that they can compete and stand in various feats of strength? It's not easy to develop a magic system. I've developed quite a few over the years for various projects that I've worked on. And you eventually get to a point where you find yourself needing to answer this question. And I'll be quite honest, you should answer it first. What are they? If you're calling them healers, ask yourself the question, is there any other kind of magic or is it just healing magic? Are you calling them divines or monks or druids? Oh, so is there magic aside from a deity? This question will help give you so many answers to questions that will come later on. Whatever comes to mind, do it really quickly. Stop thinking about it. Stop thinking about it. Blah, 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 blah. What is your magic user called? What came into your mind? What was the first thing that came into your mind? Because that will give you a hint at what you're actually wanting to create. Everything has a meaning. And I'm not telling you to go and look up the meaning on dictionary.com or Merriam-Webster or any of those. What does that mean to you? When I say that my many, not all, but most of my magic users are martial artists, that may have brought up images of Dragon Ball Z for you. Or any of the countless wuxia movies that are out there. It may have brought up Avatar The Last Airbender. Those images that flicker through your mind when you think about the word that you want to call your particular brand of magic user, that will tell you so much about the world that you're inventing. It will give you a lot of pre-built answers and a lot of questions that you're not going to have to struggle with. So answer that one first. If you can. Remember, all of these are suggestions. So, in one of my, in my very first book, the magic users are exclusively referred to as makers. And it's because they have the ability to make reality through manipulation of subtle, the subtle forces of nature. And that's why they're called makers. By knowing what they're called, You get a sense of how the magic works before we even go into the magic system. And I wish I knew that ahead of time, because I actually went through and constructed every last detail of the magic system before I had a name for them. And I could have saved so much time if I had the name first. Because once I knew that they were makers, like once I realized that, like this is the word, they're going to be called makers... Lights went out. Everything went dark for a second. And I realized, there on the stage, in the spotlight, 
was the one true magic system that I was seeking to have in this story. Everything else I was groping around on, like are there witches, are there wizards, are there spellcasters, how are spells used? Well, that setting didn't have spells. So why am I sitting there struggling over how spells are used? Because they're not. So ask yourself, early and often, what are they called? What are they called? And if you have multiple names, that's even better. Because you're starting to see the size of magic in your setting. Which, scale is a really big thing, and can really change a lot of your decisions going forward. Over how and the story should be built, and the way everything should be done. What is the scale of your magic system? Not, not, not like hard and soft. We're not there yet. We're not there yet. What is the scale of it? Is magic you only used for really big things? Is magic only used for really simple things? Or does it run the gamut from the small to the profound? What is magic for? Ask yourself that. You may, you may think that I'm asking the same question over and over again, but these are variations on the same question. That once you get an answer, once you find the answers that you feel are right for your story, then you will know what you're doing. So when you're thinking about scale, you really should be thinking about do witches and wizards or whatever you call your magical folk, do they stir their tea with magic? Do they knit their clothes and sew their clothes with magic? Are they required to give great costly things to achieve magic? And I know, I know, you may be thinking these, these are hard magic questions that need to be answered later. They're not. And they're important to ask up front and be very direct about the answer. Think about the world that you're wanting. If magic is infused in every little thing, then when you are devising your magic system, the cost of magic should be cheap. If magic is only used for really big things, then magic should be very expensive. You need to look at the magic that you're wanting to have in your stories, in your setting. And ask yourself, how intimate is magic? How far into people's lives does magic reach? Because this will tell you so much, not only about your magic system, but about your world building. Because if everything is magical, if this is My Little Pony Friendship is Magic, where everything is done with magic, just about, that can be done, then you're going to have magical seamstresses, and magical tailors, and magical coffee shops, and magical restaurants. If, on the other hand, you're doing something where magic is much more costly, or rare, or requiring great sacrifice, then, I mean, you're not going to be, like, finding the spider in the corner of the room to kill it so that you can make yourself some tea. That's not going to be a thing that you do. Now, the scale of magic really has an effect on the nature of magic in your world. This is one of the biggest differences, and I really don't want to be talking about she who shall not be named or anything about her right now, like, for so many reasons. But it's one of the biggest differences between the Harry Potter books and the Harry Potter movies. Magic is much more ubiquitous in the movies than it is in the books, and a lot of people have retroactively imagined it into the books when it's not there. In the movies, we see talking shrunken heads everywhere, and people stirring their tea and their coffee with a wave of the hand. We see magic very ubiquitous in every facet of their lives. Whereas in the books, magic requires more focus and more attention, and isn't such an offhand sort of a thing. It requires knowing spells and exactly how to operate them. And so, even though I really don't want to be talking about her for so many reasons, uh, it 
makes for a very good example because quite a few of you have probably both read the books and seen the movies. So, what are you doing? What is the scale? What is the... What are you trying to do? What are you trying to accomplish in your magic? What are you trying to get to in your stories? Ask yourself that over and over and over again, because I personally like magic to get down in the nitty gritty. I like magic to get into the basics and have it affect everything. Other people don't like that. They want it to be much more distant. So ask yourself where you want to draw the line. And then we move forward to the similar but related question that follows. Before you say, Charlie, you're asking the same question again. I'm really, really not. And please listen for the nuance here. We've talked about the scale of magic, but what is the depth of magic in your world? Now, this question only ever really gets answered when people are thinking about whether they're doing a hard or soft magic system. And yes, the answer to it can be very helpful to determining whether or not you want a hard or soft magic system. But it doesn't have to be restricted just to that. So when I say depth, I mean, like, literally, like, how deep is your magic? Because you can have very light magic, like in the books of She Who Shall Not Be Named, where, yeah, there's stuff to know and whatnot, but it really doesn't have any philosophical underpinnings that affect how people use it, to the magic in, say, Avatar The Last Airbender, where the de- the depth is so profound that Zuko and Aang have to basically learn to let go of their fear so that they can master all of the arts of firebending and become a dragon. How deep is your magic? How much do people have to go into to make it work? How rigorous is the thought process involved? How philosophically based is it? Is it like earthbending where you have to learn to make yourself solid? Where the earthbending doesn't work? Because think about it, Aang had a really hard time learning how to use earthbending because of the depth of the magic system, even though that's a soft magic system. We don't have a lot of hard and fast rules about how bending works. So these don't have to go hand in hand, and that's why I want you to ask yourself beforehand, because you can have a very deep magic system without having to have a hard magic system. So when you're thinking about the question of depth, one, philosophical questions are very important. Because, say you're writing a divine magic story. If you're writing divine magic, then there needs to be a cost or a price for, you know, upsetting your gods. Because if you have to be in good with a god to have access to magic... If you offend that god and break the rules that that god has established, one, you should definitely lose your magic, (laughs) but there should be a price to that because you've literally offended a deity. This isn't theoretical anymore because in the world, that's where the magic comes from. So how in depth is the philosophy here? Does every magical order and every art have its own philosophy in depth? Or is it kind of a general idea that pervades everything like, say, the Force in Star Wars? Which is it? Do they have contradictory opinions or feelings about how to perceive the Force or use the Force? Because that is a magic system, no matter what anybody tries to say. It's it's definitely a magic system. So what are you wanting to do? How deep? How deep is your story? How deep is the magic ingrained into the story? Because it can help and or hinder your story, depending on the type of story that you're telling. If you're doing a story that is based in Illuminism, which we're going to be talking about in detail in next week's episode, which is magic as a spiritual path to enlightenment, then 
you should probably have a fairly deep idea of what magic is, because if it's actually going to bring about some sort of enlightenment, whatever that means for your setting, it needs to have the rigor to stand up to that. Because nothing, at least for me, makes a magic system fall flat than when we hear about the great cost of doing it or the great philosophy that the characters have to maintain in order to use it. And then witness characters that are totally not using it in that way because they're the villains and they don't use it that way because they're the villains, but it somehow still works for them. See, that's something that you could easily hand wave with literally a couple lines about how there are contradictory ideas and make the magic more shallow and less deep. The whole point and purpose of today's episode is to get you to start asking yourself the hard questions before we get to the super hard questions about magic. Because if you don't have a foundation laid out before we get started, it's not going to get any easier. It really isn't. Because especially if you're developing a hard magic system, you are going to have to face the struggles that come with that. And so the more preparation you have before getting involved, before getting into it, the better prepared you are and will be to actually achieve your goals, aims, and ambitions. It's as simple as that. Writing is hard. Magic is hard to maintain in a way that feels appropriate and right. But if you're not going to be worrying about that, then you want a shallow, soft, magic system because this really is another layer another couple spectrums that need to be put over things because hard to soft is glorious and yes the hybrids in the middle but there are these other questions of scale that very rarely get asked and then you know leave the story feeling a little hollow when they're not answered Because whether or not you realize that you want answers to these questions, you want answers to these questions. So, what are your answers? Mine don't matter, because I'm not writing your story. What anybody else that you like does, doesn't matter, because they're not writing your story either. The whole point and purpose of this is to find your answers, so that your story can work your way, and grow into the world that it wants to be. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I have been having a lot of fun doing this. If you have any questions, comments, or topics you'd like to hear discussed on the show, down in the show notes, you'll find a link to the voice message system. Please keep it short. I think they limit you to one minute. And clean so I can use it on the show. I love answering your questions, and this entire series was actually sparked by some listener questions. So, they're getting a lot more than they thought. (laughs) I think they thought I was just going to do an episode and not just go on and on and on. But I'm going to go on and on and on because there's a lot to talk about. If you have a dollar that you can pass my way down in the same show notes, you'll find a link to listener support, my Patreon, and my coffee account for one-time donations. Thank you to everybody who helps out. It really does mean the world to me. Ad revenue brings in some money, but not like a crazy amount. And if I'm going to be doing this full time and really bringing you the level of quality that I want to, it's not inexpensive or cheap. So thank you so much. Everyone who does that, you mean the world to me, especially you, Kat. You know who you are. You're amazing. Go check out Kat Leo on everything. Kat Leo writing. She is amazing. All righty. If you don't have any money right now, or you don't feel like giving, that's perfectly all right. That's perfectly fine. But if you know anybody that you think might like anything that I do, please share it with them. That really would mean the world to me. Alrighty. Thank you so much for listening. 
And hopefully one day we won't have to do this part, but, you know, sing it along with me, shall we? Black lives matter. Black trans lives matter. Trans identities are valid. Especially, especially now, we really need to be saying all three of these things loudly and proudly until the powers that be actually listen and change things for the better. (sighs) Until next time, may you have the courage to ride your dreams into reality. And don't forget to have the fun. Bye.